How you doing everybody? Mike and Deb from Iron Horse Overland. We're coming to you from beautiful Cocachino. I think that's the way it's pronounced. We think. We're not sure. Um, National Forest in Arizona. This place is wonderful. Anyways, we're here to uh, show you our completed Battleborn battery install and uh, full 12 volt install. Yes, we did it in the desert. Um, it's a DIY uh, install. I think it looks good. It's safe. Um, and I want to throw a big shout out to Kelly and Brandon from Bring Your Own, Bring Your Own Everything Overland. He is a wiring guru and our initial install, he's the one that helped us do it. Um, electrical is not my specialty. I can do a lot of things. Deb can do a lot of things, but electrical, it's a little scary to me. We're, we're learning. We're yeah, learning. And we're learning. Um, and Brandon was uh, instrumental in helping us become far more comfortable with it than we were before. And it's made some changes from our initial install before we went to Baja. It worked spectacular in our, uh, in our trip, our 37 days in Baja. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Kelly. Um, well, and everybody. Mike, um, Montero Mike, uh, was super helpful in giving us advice. He was going to help us with the initial install, um, but we ended up getting COVID. So that initial install got nixed, um, but he was super helpful with all sorts of, of technical advice for us. And just, uh, yeah, shout out to all, all the people out there that were super helpful. And, and, and I guess the moral of the story is if we can do this in the middle of the uh you know lake mead and the desert in el centro you don't have to go and pay somebody you know thousands of dollars to install your your gear um you pay a lot for it and you can save money by by doing your own install and and it really when i look back at it and I'm not taking away from what Brandon helped us with. I think most people with a little help could do this themselves. And um, with a little YouTube university yeah, assistance. I mean, YouTube, there's so much information out there. But what we're going to show you is our, our, what our 12 volt system consists of now and the things that are, that are running through it. Sure. All right, so like I said, we're going to show you our, what the, the end result was and, um, you know, everything that's attached through it. So I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave uh, a comment. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Um, if uh, you don't like something, tell us so we can get better. All right, well, let's get to it and uh hope you like all righty here's our uh the front of our forerunner the hood area do a quick pan through it's our premium power onboard welding system that also acts as our charging system for the cranking battery goes through a 180 amp uh welding alternator x2 power battery and then Part of our 12 volt system that we put in was the second box, where this is the number one box for our Bantam S Pod system. And it works awesome. Super easy to install. It's a very clean install. And then next to that's our ARB single compressor for our lockers. Everything in our 12 volt system is going through our uh, house battery, our lithium battery from Battleborn Batteries. I don't like a lot of things going to our, our cranking battery because you run the risk of have, run, having a flat battery. So at this point, what we're running through our cranking battery is our Warren Winch and our Long Range America um, external fuel tank, as well as it connects into the premium power power welder. And 
But a fuel tank, you just mean the uh, the pump that yes, the pump that changes everything. Yes. All right, everyone. So this is the rear of our Toyota 4Runner. We have a seat delete and we have a goose gear system, plate system that normally goes over the top of this. We've removed it so we can show you guys what's back here. So I'm going to go over here first to the powerhouse of our entire system. And that is the Battleborn battery, 100 amp hour lithium internally heated battery. Um, loving this thing. No longer do I have to worry about uh, when it gets down to 60 or 50 percent, start shutting everything off and trying to figure out where we are as far as what we can do for charging. Um, don't have to worry about if it gets below freezing anymore. Just so many things we don't have to worry about with this anymore. You can see uh, all our little fuse systems here. The brain that runs this system is the Red Arc Manager 30 and the switching system that we're using is S-Pods Bantam. We have one here and um, in a bit Mike will show you the one we have under the hood. So as you can see, clean wire runs, wire loom, keep everything safe. I've uh, a little freak with safety so I've covered up stuff with um, some of this rubber high density rubber that I got off of Amazon I actually have a little cover for the battery as well that covers the hot and the ground terminals just just so you know nothing can slide back here and somehow ground something out um, we've got it kind of strapped down a, a little hokey right now um, but we've got Fort Camper is making us a custom battery box to fit right in our little spot. Um, we should be getting that here fairly soon and we'll do some installing on that. Just make it look a little bit cleaner, but at the moment we've got it strapped down with a cam strap and it's, it didn't move at all the entire time we were in Mexico. So pretty happy with that. So that is everything that lives underneath the plate system. Again, it's the Battleborn battery, 100 amp hour lithium with the internal heating. And then the brain is the Red Arc. And all of our switching is from our S-Pod. Also during this install, everybody needs to be able to charge stuff. You know, our drill batteries, portable batteries, drone batteries. So what we did is we installed a Kotec SP1000 1000 watt inverter on our Rago panel. It's a little messy right now, but it works well. We have that plugged into a very good uh, power strip, which runs down to uh, all our stuff that we need to charge. And then we have a remote switch back on the wall that turns that on and it works absolutely outstanding. And now we're inside the cockpit area and over here to the left side of the steering wheel we have our uh, S-Pod controller that allows between the two number one box and the number two box it uh, allows us to control our front air compressor, our front locker, rear locker, ditch lights, grill lights light bar uh, on the roof and the one on the uh, bull bar and then we can switch it over and then we can do scene lights passenger lights our rear air compressor for airing up and airing down uh, rear dust lights and then we still have a few switches to uh, if we need to add things also what this does, and, and it's really cool, is gives you the temp of your battery as well as your um, 
how much energy is still left in your battery. What it also does is when you turn on something, it will also tell you what the draw is on each thing you turn on so you have a good working idea of what draws your run you're working with. And then you come over here and one of my favorite things and you can't see it very well and I apologize it's just the lighting we have out here um, is the Red Arc Manager 30 faceplate and what that allows us to do is see the status of our battery as well as draws coming in draws coming out um, it also gives you, it'll tell you how much solar you have coming in, how much solar you've, you've brought in for the day. It'll show you all your vital statistics for your 12 volt system over the day. It, it works awesome. We also wired in our over uh, Garmin Overlander and then if you own a, a forerunner you know good and well that we get little or no 12 volt plugs so I wired in this Blue Seas uh, USB we have four USB slots and a 12 volt cigarette lighter slot so that gives us full-time power on you know phones and everything else we also have our Yaesu FTM 400 ham radio attached, uh, hooked into it, and our Garmin InReach Explorer. Um, if you are going to be going out in the woods, way back in the backcountry, it is a very good thing to have. It allows you to have communications with family members with anybody and if things go really bad you can hit the SOS button it'll drop a it'll tell them exactly where you are and the troops are coming well that's the uh, front area of our truck and um, everything is working wonderfully thanks to our Battleborn batteries um, right now our battery is at uh, 90% and I'm still getting solar off the roof. So that's awesome. Uh, let's see. We've gotten uh, uh, 556 watt hours today. Okay, so this is the top of our Forerunner. We've got quite a few things up here. We've got our Pelican boxes that hold our um, recovery gear, some spare stuff, our little weather station so we know how fast the wind is blowing and our gazelle patio screen tent for uh, Alaska and other places where there are bugs that like to eat me. But as it pertains to the 12 volt system, up here we have our Renergy 100 watt solar panel. Try to get an angle here where the sun's not totally shining in the face there. Um, we picked this for a couple of reasons. Why did we go with Renergy? Um, the only reason we went with Renergy is because it fit exactly the dimensions that we had space for. We looked at, at other, we wanted to go with 4th D Solar because that's what we have in a foldable panel and we really love them. But uh, we couldn't find anything that would fit. So Renergy on Amazon had the perfect size. We wanted a rigid panel on top of the truck because we wanted to have solar incoming and passively charging no matter where we were sitting. Obviously, if we're in a super treed area, that won't work, but we wanted to have something coming in no matter what. We have, say hi, Mike. Hi. We have our 4th D solar foldable portable panel. We didn't want to have to buy two of those because again, when you're full time, space and weight are a huge issue. So just having one foldable panel and having to figure out where to put that was enough. We wanted something that would passively charge the truck just like our panel on our Patriot Camper hardtop passively charges the trailer. Look at where we are. It's beautiful. So we ended up with this Renergy. We've been super happy with this. 
it consistently gives us um, and we, we've actually gotten 100 watts out of it before, which we were kind of shocked. Usually you don't get the rated amount that a panel says, but we have. Not quite sure how that happens, but we are not going to argue. We have this wired through a gland that's going through the roof of the truck, down into the truck, and running to the Red Arc system. And to round out our solar system, I installed a... Zamp Solar SAE solar plug in the front passenger um, fender. Ignore the fender flare coming off. I have to fix that. And then it wires back to the Red Arc Manager 30. I want to change that out to a Anderson plug at one point because you'll have less resistance. But you just take this little adapter SAE to Anderson plug that in and then go to our uh, outside panel so if our 100 watt Renogy is not keeping up or it is not in an area where it can get the Sun I just plug in our fourth D 170 watt foldable and then we are running 270 watts and which will probably get 225 watts uh, of solar well that's the end of our video we enjoyed doing it if you liked it please hit the like button and the subscribe button if you have any uh, concerns or any uh, constructive criticism please or tips please put it in the comments below I look at them every day and then I answer them hope everybody's having a great week have a nice day